Welcome back to the stage, Yohei Amir. Well, and now I would like to introduce to Mr. Alex Winter and Elijah Wood and Don Mike Manners that I don't know should be here. Yeah, it's a stable. Well, Don will join us eventually. Uh, I hope think he's in the loop. Think he's in the restroom. <laughs> so, well, how are you doing, guys? Do you guys like it? Isn't it incredible to see this guy that when I met him, it was like, well, when I was a kid, I played piano a little bit. Like, I forget everything I learned about it. Suddenly, you get it there like three minutes in a row, naked, just one shot. I, I can't believe it. He made me scared watching it again. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. It's, it's amazing. While we're waiting for Todd, I wanted to mention you guys had really good news this morning, huh? <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm actually not the one. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but my, uh, uh, all the details. Hold on, it's here. It's fantastic. Yeah, we have distribution for the U.S. That is kind of a. It comes from Magnolia. I swear to God, never happened before that fast. Uh, when it comes to my short but intense career, so, so I couldn't be more pleased. This is fucking amazing. Yes. So thank you, Magnolia. I think we have a question back there. Two uh, things. First, Elijah, you use your hands. That's a baby's toy. <laughs> wow. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, tell us the genesis of how the, 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 the story came about. The question was, can you tell us the genesis of how the story came about? Yes, well, um, um, I, didn't uh, I didn't write this thing, and um, <laughs> it's very important to say that. Because when the producers thought about, I mean, Adrian uh, Guerra and uh, Rodrigo Cortez, director and producer of uh, Period and Red Lights, um, they thought of me maybe because they know that I'm a musician and I, that I love to make, you know, all these shelf-by-shelf things, and I'm, you know, very young and all that, and, and we, we've been hanging out in sitches and... Uh, so at the very beginning and talking about projects, so they said, hey, we got this script that's kind of a, has a crazy premise, you're going to love it, it's very Hitchcock and Brian Palma, blah, blah, blah. And I read it, and I, I swear to God that my first reaction was like, you don't know what you're talking about, this is a sheer amount of work, I mean, this is not, I mean, to make it work like it works on paper, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't want to produce this. <laughs> I mean, just the pre-production is going to be like going into a, um, a movie for David Lean or something, because it's really that demanding, and it demanded a lot of work. But um, the funny thing is, I, I fell in love with the, with the challenge, and I started to work on it like, because I had time to, uh, to do it, even before we knew that we had a green light. And I think that that paid off, because when there was an official green light, it was like, oh, so I'm not stupid, I'm not doing this for nothing. But uh, I, I, there was no way to not start way before what a movie demands, because this was a very special movie to work. So yes, I read the script, I thought it was crazy, and I was instantly in love with this incredible blend of things that we've seen thousands of times and things that we've never seen before. And I think that is the secret of uh, mainstream movies that we don't see anymore. Um, and that's what it is. Uh, nowadays, these movies are automatically independent because it is, and strange because it is. But, um, you know, I, I don't know how, how to brand it. That's for Magnolia. They have a, a hard job there. <laughs> so, that's it. Are there other hands in there? Right? Oh my God! I love Brian, so don't say that. Don't say that. I'll, I'll repeat for the other theater. Uh, they, oh, Aaron said it's the best Brian De Palma film that Brian De Palma ever made. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. No, thank you so much. Aaron. Uh, I, uh, so, Elijah, you know, you just play piano. I mean, uh, that's, that's there are some big shots there that uh, last for such a long time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The question was for Elijah. There, there's some fixed shots of you playing piano that last for a long time. Can you talk about how that was done? Oh man, um, <laughs> very stressful. Um, I worked for about three weeks prior to going to Barcelona on the piano. An additional two weeks, thank God, when I got there um, to continue working on it before we actually started shooting the music stuff. Um, for those long uninterrupted shots, particularly a loss of cat. Um, I, that, thankfully, was towards the end of shooting all the musical sequences, so I had a lot of time to work on that particular piece, and I did spend a lot of time working on it. Um, but the original plan was to only shoot, I think, there were like a number of bars less than what we ended up doing. 
and by some sheer fucking miracle, uh, during rehearsal, I, I, I just, um, I, we, we worked out the piece that I had kind of already worked out, and then kept going. I don't know why I suggested that. Um, but but I, I managed to actually get through a lot more than what I'd originally planned. And I think it was just osmosis at this point. Like, I, I'd heard the song so many times that it sort of seeped into my, uh, into my hands somehow. I, watching it now, I genuinely, I don't understand how I did it. Um, but the, the worst, it, worse than that, was that a lot of the sequences it, it had involved me not only playing, but also listening to uh, John Cusack and having to reply. So having to play, hearing the music cues at the same time as I was, and, I'm, and also having to listen to dialogue and receive or, or give dialogue, that was the worst. I'm Tina. I'm, that's it. I'm the I, devil. I literally felt like I was losing my mind at, at those particular junctures. Yeah. Hell, it exists. It's, it's true. <laughs> we were born in hell. It was a fun challenge, though. Yeah. It's amazing. I have to mention that Don, that uh, played the conductor. We had the same. Yeah, we had. The, we, he went into the same thing. He was freaking out when he came to our to our arms. Maybe, maybe we can. We commiserated immediately. Exactly. They, they were together in that thing. Of, oh my God! I had to. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yes. Well, first of all, when, when they asked me to do it, and I, I read the script, and I said, you know that I don't do any of this, right? I, I, don't, I don't do anything. He's like, well, yeah, so I said, no, I don't have any background at all in this. And he said, ah, he was, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Uh, you'll learn how to do it. You'll, you'll have a week. You'll, we'll bring you in a week early. you work on it. I was like, oh, oh, oh good. A week early. That's awesome, yeah. And so I got there, and... We had this, uh, we both had really good coaches. They were just amazing guys. And mine was this guy named Tobias Gossmann, who is an Austrian conductor, and is very straightforward and serious about how this is done. You know, because I went in saying I don't want to do any kind of nonsense. I I, I really want to do it well. Tobias wasn't going to let me do anything but that. You know, and for hours alone in my Barcelona apartment, I was doing like these. Went to a metronome, but just and convinced that I was never, ever, ever going to learn this. And would go in and work in the studio, and I'd run into Elijah and say, "I'm not ever going to do this. This is never going to work." And and Elijah would say, "I know, I know," <laughs> <laughs> because that's what that's what every other day is like for me. He's like, "It'll get better, and then it'll get worse, and then it'll get," better. and that's exactly what it was. And then I'm just like just like Elijah's story, and. We were about a weekend, and like the first day with the orchestra, I walked out there, was it 60 people? 50 people? Yeah, 60, yeah. 50, 60, yeah, something like that. And I walked out and I said to the, the orchestra, please be kind to me because I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> and they were. And at the end of the first week, we're doing one of the longer sequences. And, uh, and there was a guide track, a sort of metronome track that went on to so keep us all in, uh, you know, together. And then the, at the end of the take, typically, the guide track would go out, and then Eugenio would yell cut, and we'd reset and do it. And I'm an actor. If you don't say cut, I'm not going to stop. And the guide track went out, and I'm conducting, and Eugenio doesn't say cut. So I kept conducting into like stuff that I had never really worked on. I'd, I'd listened to, but I hadn't. And the orchestra kept playing. And so we're all doing this together, you know? and then I see Elijah sort of get up and walk over the top of that, that, that stage there, and Eugenio will go over the top of the stage here, sort of looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? And I say, you didn't tell me to stop, and we're playing. So that was the first time that happened, and I, that, at that point I thought we were going to be okay. That was a magic moment. It was a magic moment. Was awesome. More questions, please? Over here. I wanted to talk about the music. So the, the question was, how much of the music was written for the film and how much was pre-existing and how you approached which pieces you chose to use in the film? We combined two different systems. One is, um, I'm a musician and I made the music for the other movies that I made, but this one it was like a, too huge. I mean, it was, it, it was too much. What I was useful for the composer was to figure out uh, what I called the grid where I could find dynamics. I created a Frankenstein kind of, uh, uh, out of 19 different, oh, oh, it's working. And um, I worked with, well, you know, see if you know something about sound 
editing it, uh, sometimes writing some stuff to make it was horrible to read to, to, to listen to that. I was based on Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky. I went for the things that even nobody that has ever heard about a classic concert thing, things that it's a piano concert with an orchestra. And um, I, I worked very, very close to what it was demanding the script, plus what I wanted to to define as the, the way that it was going to be portrayed. It, it's very complicated for me to talk about this because it took a lot of time. And after that, well, when the composer came, it was like, oh my god, this is a lot of work, and yeah, yeah, but this is nothing. We have to keep going. So there was a lot of pre-production. Uh, of course, this is like a musical, so we needed to have that track. And then when we were uh, went into the ed editing room, we barely changed uh, the structure, but we changed a lot of the of the of the inside of it. So it was like a five different kind of processes. It's, it's crazy. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. But believe me, it was very complicated. And I have to hail for uh, Victor Reyes, the, the composer, who made a terrific job trying to conceal all the needs for this particular work. And it, it's, it was completely hellish. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, really. I got fond memories about it, by the way. Right there. The question was about the concert assassination sequence for men who knew too much and how much it inspired you in making this film. I, I have to be very frank with this. All the Hitchcock uh, flavor, it was already on paper. Damien Chazelle, the writer, this is the great thing, he's a director. And he wrote it originally back in the day to direct it himself. Then he decided to, to move it you know, in, the, in the industry. And it came to my hands. And I wanted to meet him very because it was obvious that that was design, that somebody that loved movies, and that it wasn't just a writer, but a filmmaker. Um, so it's funny because I loved that movie since I'm a kid. I'm super in love with uh, Thursday, you know, and, and <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. And I, I, I love everything. Like the opening, I mean, I, I know it by, by heart. But to be honest, I never saw. Anything. I just not even. I didn't even went for the obvious things. I brought up on. I went to silent movies. I always say that these movie, you can play it mute, and there's a lot of emotion going on. It, ironically, being so uh, based on music, it, it goes back to Murnau or Fritz Lang for for real because it's a shot by shot thing. It's like a comic book. It's like one shot leads to another. There's no coverage. I mean, you start from point A and you go to the end. It's like the most basic and ancient way of uh, sequential art and filmmaking. And um, I always love to do that. Uh, but the only way you can do that, make it affordable, and make it fit in eight weeks of production, that's what we had, is to design it <laughs> way before. So when you go to shoot it, your first AD, after seven, he had uh, our first AD, Javier Soto, he had like, it was 17 different drafts. Of, of the schedule. I mean, and he said that it was the first time that he made a schedule, not by scenes, but by shots. So th this gives you a little image of how complex it was. But we figured it out. It was like, you, know, you mentioned that all the time, that when we had one of the shots together, it was like, we felt that we had a piece of the movie, literally. Every day. It was like, we have eight shots today. Because keep in mind, we had, a, we had an animatic of the entire film, basically, from, from when the music starts until it stops. So that section, which is 80% of the film. So we literally every day were, were like shipping away at this particular thing that was effectively the film. So every day was a, a, a triumph because we were, you know, we'd get that shot that we'd seen and we'd get this shot and suddenly it was, it was literally chipping away at the movie. Well, and, and at the end of the day, they drop in, they do a rough edit and drop those shots oh, yeah. we into the animatic. <laughs> so you'd be watching this, you know, an, an animatic of the thing and then there'd be Elijah and the orchestra and you know, and then it'd go back to the and so we were like filling in this and it was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was incredible. Sometimes we were like uh, surrounded by shots, it's like, oh my god, we got thirteen seconds and he has to do this this turn and he has to cut too and it has to work perfect. So thank god that this guy is a is a machine trained with great minds and masters and is a natural Mr. Elijah Wood. He gave us three times more than we could ever dare to ask him. And um, that's, it's true. It's true. When it comes to me, I will be working with him forever. 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 <laughs> By the way, we have Alex Winter here. I have to say something. That's very important to me. Because we never met before until we made this movie. 
And uh, I have to say, and, and, and this is true, that when I talked to him in the first conversation, uh, I was a huge fan of his work as a director. Um, and and it's, it's true. I said, I, I like to think, and, and it's getting worse with the, the older I get, that I get surrounded by, by filmmakers instead of people that just make sound or an actor and all that. And I have to say, there's been a, an incredible delight to work with a director because when you see that he understands that what you're demanding is something that is not only what you're saying to an actor, but he gets like, gotcha. Oh like, my God. like no coverage no, at all. Like no coverage. <laughs> in any of your scenes. We're done. Oh, oh my God. Get it all in one five minute shot. Get it right. Goodbye. We're moving on. <laughs> so to me, I have to say that it's been a dream come true working with a director. I, now I understand how Steven Spielberg feels when he worked with Francois Truffaut and Closing Cutters and Richard Attenborough in Jurassic Park. Now I know how that bearded bastard, that genius, feels so good in why he surrenders himself with talented directors. So when it comes to me, Alex Winter, I love you so much. The question was, Alex, what was it like working, working with Eugenia? Okay, all right. Well, this is the first thing I've acted in since Freaked in 93. Um, so, I mean, I've done a little things longer, but I don't say yes to roles anymore. I haven't for 20 years. And the reason I did was because I got this script, and it was so totally fucking audacious that I thought, this is either going to be the worst film ever made, or it's going to be absolutely incredible. And then I found out about the cast, and I, knew, I was intrigued because of, of Rodrigo Cortez and Eugenio's involvement, and I knew it was coming from this really cool group of Spanish filmmakers that are doing really amazing things right now, so that certainly piqued my interest. And then I talked to this guy in this really staccato Skype thing where we caught like every 15th word. But every 15th word was like, it was absolutely incredible. And uh, I, don't, I think if I put it all together, it might have just said, get out. You know? but, uh, but it really, it, it was really, honestly, um, you know, watching it right now is, is funny because I hadn't seen the movie before. But, but like Elijah said, the movie was so done in prep that I, I had seen it already. Like there was nothing, was, it was fantastic to see, but what I loved about Eugenio's approach was that it was totally filmic. Um, I mean, you watch this thing, it's really nothing but, but sound and, and composition. And that's all it is. And you could totally watch this with the sound off. And it's like, it's so virtuosic and each piece just ends in a scene sequence and it ends in a scene sequence and it ends in a scene sequence and it's so, gratifying that it isn't shot like Born Ultimatum, you know? I'm, I'm having... There were like shots that go on for like a really long time and Elijah's great in them or Don's great in them and then they're over and you're like, ah, you know? I personally close my eyes when I'm on screen, but, but, um, <laughs> wait for it to end. Um, but, uh, but seriously, it was, it was just an unbelievably great experience and so I get to like step off the stage again for a while and, uh, Wait till someone else gives me something really bananas like this. <laughs> well, now I'm having a what I, I like to call a spiritual boner. <laughs> it was a love fest, as you can tell. We all had a really great time together. So, okay. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, everybody. Happy birthday, Michael. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. Thank you very much, guys. We'll be back with, with more stuff in the future. Yeah. I hope so.